Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Photography with Emery, and that would be me. And on today's episode, UV filters. Before moving on to the filter itself, it's beneficial to know a little more about ultraviolet light. In general, human eyes can see in the range of about 400 to 750 nanometers on the electromagnetic spectrum, more commonly referred to as visible light. By the way, a nanometer is one billionth of a meter, really, really small. Think on the scale of molecules. Ultraviolet light sits just beyond the range of what our eyes can see in the 10 to 400 nanometer range, the extreme to near ultraviolet respectively. For photographic purposes, we'll ignore anything less than 350 nanometers, as the glass found in lenses almost completely blocks shorter wavelengths. Now let's start applying this to photography. Color film is generally comprised of three color layers, red, green, and blue, which are made of various dyes and compounds that allow the film to react to light. If you're taking photos in an environment where there is a higher concentration of ultraviolet light, such as under a blue sky, or at higher elevations like in the Rockies, the blue layer of film tends to become somewhat overexposed, thus creating what is usually described as a hazy blue cast. So in comes the UV filter to the rescue, which as you've probably guessed by now reduces or eliminates most of that hazy blue color cast. Typically these filters appear clear and transparent, but there are a few different varieties. Some are still clear, but filter out greater amounts of UV than other models, and some have uh, even a slight pinkish or yellowish color cast to add a warmer tone to the photo. Sometimes the latter is referred to as sky or skylight filters. Depending on the brand, each filter will have its own designation, so if you want to find out more, I'd recommend visiting the websites of a few manufacturers. Links, as usual, can be found on my blog. Before moving on, another name UV filters fall under is protection filters, as many photographers also use them to guard the front exposed glass element of their lenses. But more on this later when I discuss their pros and cons. Now, what about digital cameras? Well, unlike film, digital sensors are not as sensitive to UV light. Actually, sensors are instead more sensitive to the near-infrared spectrum, and almost all have infrared or IR blocking filters right in front of the chip. But I digress. So what role can or does a UV filter play if ultraviolet light hardly affects the color cast on photos taken with a digital camera? And since we can easily adjust the white balance on a digital camera, is a warming UV filter required like those skylight ones? Well, before moving on to their pros and cons, let's answer these two questions. Based on my research, a UV filter has virtually no effect in regard to color cast on photos taken with a digital camera. So for that reason alone, it makes little to no sense to use one. Instead, I would recommend that you use the white balance settings to warm the tone of an image with a cooler color cast. And if you really want to get warmer color cast to an image, then there are specific colored filters I would recommend instead. Putting the ultraviolet filtering and color cast issue aside, as that point is moot, let's look at some of the pros of UV filters. First up is protection, and this topic actually encompasses a few different things. For one, if you shoot in environments that are wet, like rainy or snowy conditions, then it's easier and safer to clean a UV filter than the front lens element. Same goes for dusty or sandy places where blowing particles could in effect sandblast your lens, not only scratching it but potentially wearing off those fancy coatings that increase light transmission and reduce glare. The ideology here is might as well ruin an inexpensive filter than an expensive lens. UV filters may also provide some drop protection, but this strongly depends on how a lens contacts the surface it falls on. But a UV filter may prevent the front lens from being scratched as it will take up the brunt of the impact. But I'll discuss this more in a bit. Now let's look at some of the cons. Depending on the quality of the UV filter, image quality will be affected to some degree. Very expensive high-end filters, costing as much as $200, may not affect the image much at all. But cheaper filters could result in various image aberrations such as slight loss of sharpness, distortions caused by cheap glass in the filter, and odd reflections or flaring because the filter is not properly coated. This is usually why you hear photographers against UV filters say, why put a cheap piece of glass in front of your expensive lens? 
If you always keep your UV filter on, but use other filters as well, then stacking them together may result in vignetting. But this really depends on the thickness of the filters you're stacking and the focal length of your lens, so this may not always be an issue. Some sources say that UV filters are basically a money maker for stores, which depending on your overall stance on them may be true. Having worked in a photography store, I know that the markup for such items is generally around 80 to a full 100% on the cost of a filter. So a filter that costs a store $25 will generally be sold at $50. And a UV filter may be useless if you drop your lens depending on how it hits a surface. For one, dropping your lens in such a way where the filter shatters may be more detrimental. The shards of broken glass may end up scratching your front lens anyway. Also, dropping a lens could lead to many other serious consequences such as damage to the micromotors that control autofocus, damage to the mount, especially plastic ones, and damage to, damage to other internal parts like the aperture mechanism and electronic connections that may jar loose, not to mention the many internal lenses that could go out of alignment. So, should you use UV filters or not? Well, the choice is really up to you. Uh, it's very personal. They're, they're actually very good points on both sides. I mean, yeah, in a way they're not that useful, but at the same time, you know, for bumps, scratches, and things like that, it's actually very useful. So, bottom line, think about it and make your own decision. That's the best way to do it. That way, you're going to be happy with your own answer, hopefully. So, in my case, I'll, I'll say my personal answer, but of course, you know, it's just a uh, personal opinion. Uh, generally, I don't use it. I somewhat subscribe to the idea that I don't really want to put a cheap kind of piece of glass in front of my lens and I don't want to spend $200 just for a single filter. And luckily, knock on wood, I've been careful with my lenses, so so far so good. However, I do have equipment that is weather uh, sealed, so and I have shot in rain and snow, and in those cases, it's wonderful because I don't get moisture and build up directly on the lens. I can just use any tissue just to wipe off the UV filter. So I kind of do use it and I don't. Um, depends on the circumstance. But like I say, make your own decision. Weigh the facts. Check out my blog. I have some links to websites as well. They might help you also make that decision. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this episode informative. Uh, remember to check out my blog because I do have additional information there and links to websites uh, further on this topic. As well as don't forget to subscribe. That way you can keep uh, up to date with my videos. And I'm also doing something new. On my blog I'll have a post which uh, you can check out if you want to submit questions to me. And uh, depending on uh, the question, what it is, uh, I may actually feature it on one of my episodes. So check out my blog for that. Otherwise, I certainly hope to see you next time. Take care.